So we're here <laughs> in the uh, dregs of Aquarium Co-op, the part that you guys hardly ever see. And I get to do an unbox. I've never done an unboxing, although that's not really true because we've done a couple unboxings from Peru. <laughs> How many did you get? Right. But I've never done a store unboxing. We're going to do it today. Uh, so it's numero uno. That's right. You've watched an unboxing or two then. I have watched a few. My um, favorite part is Dean was already like, this would be hard to do one-handed. Like, you're dang right it is. Oh, these are toasty. Especially when it's snowing outside. These are really toasty. That's a good thing, right? As long as it's not the summer. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta hit the camera. I'm, I'm hiding behind it. Nope. It didn't go anywhere. That's no fun. All right, guys. Let's see what we have here. I'm gonna go for a little bag first. Yeah, let's go for this one. It's an L128 Pleco. Is that Green Phantom? Uh, blue, blue Phantom, blue, maybe. Blue, yeah. Blue, yeah, Blue Phantom. Yeah, good size. Nice, and there's poop in the bag. That's right. <laughs> and I didn't put it there. Yeah, these aren't from Peru. Oh, look at these. I haven't had these for ages. You've kept these, right? I've kept these. Yeah, I think everyone <laughs> gets a frog. kept them? There is. Um, oh, there's a floater. Floater. That's not good. It looks half alive, but we'll yeah. see. Yeah. Remember when we talked about little bags? So um, where is the best collection of bettas in the Seattle area? I mean, I'd have to say my store, but that's bragging. I think it is. Your I have store. the most. For and sure, I have the most. That's gorgeous. I mean, I've been to this show, store several times where there's people shopping bettas. Mm -hmm. And I said to them, can you buy just one? And there's like, you can't buy just one because yep. there's hundreds of them. Look at these guys. Well, we try and order from several vendors. So we'll import from Thailand ourselves, but then we'll buy from almost every other fish wholesaler because they'll have different farms they buy from. So we get a wide variety, but you know, even for like, this is just, I think of, these are just veil tails. These so they look veil -tails. awesome. Yeah, they look awesome. Yeah. And actually you, you also sometimes hand select them, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So it all just, uh, you know, depends on which wholesaler will let us, which won't, you know, that kind of stuff. Bag number three. These are small. Oh, we just did a video coolies. on those. Yeah. So we must have sold out probably is what it's happened. 35 in this bag. These are really cool little fish too. Yeah. A little bit of water, but I don't think that's coming from the bag, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, I've, I've been where they pack these, and there's a lot of water, so they're, you know, the bags are wet before they're even packed, really. These guys are little Congo Tetras. Uh, nice size to get them at because you have a good chance at this size of getting both sexes. Yeah. Um, a lot of times they will only sell you the males or females. We try to only buy the males because that's what everyone wants to buy. But sometimes they'll be out for just months and months at a time. So. But also, you've got to remember, if you want those males to get their full color, there's got to be a couple females for them to flash at. As much as I try to convince customers, they thought I was just trying to get more money out of them. And yeah. it's like, I, I promise you, they'll look better. These are 50 neons. Standard Small. neon tetra look good. They look good. No floaters. Yeah. That's always a good sign, especially with neons. Oh, check this one out. Another better. Oh, crown tail. Oh, it focused on the background instead of. There well, we maybe go. I should move it down to my shirt level. This is a Dumbo ear. Yep. Really nice. It's almost had like a spade tail. It had a weird tail to it. That one did. Yeah. A little bit. I hadn't seen that before. How many times have you spawned bettas in your life? Too Roughly. Many. Yeah. Too many. Actually, if as the story goes, if you remember right, the very first fish I ever brought to the shop uh -huh. was like two or three hundred little... Of the Thai bettas. Of the Thai bettas, uh -huh. the white ones. And I think you had them in the tank for over a year. I don't know if it was a year, but it was... It was a long We sold time. a bunch at the beginning, and then the market was flooded with those. Because yeah. they were like white Thai bettas they or something. They were white. They were, they were yeah. super cool. Yeah. So, yeah, I spawned a lot of them. Uh, in fact, I, I'm looking for a female right now to spawn. I have the male. A select one, huh? Yeah. 
It, it needs to be one of the Nemo ones, whatever you call those. Oh yeah, that they are. It's, it's like a, a nice koi blue. Nemo or whatever they're calling yeah, it. Like, yeah. so I have. I don't know what brings it the knee, the knee, uh, the Nemo name, but yes. This is another really nice Dumbo ear. Let's see if we yeah. can. Yeah. Let's get him out there. Come on, there you go. Mm-hmm. And you know, the, a lot of times when you get bedas, the fins are all shredded. These are super nice. Look at that guy. Yeah. This is Crown why you tail. can't take just one home. It's because they don't have to have big tanks and it's too easy to go, well, I could set up one more little tank. Okay, I think this is the There last. were like a hundred of these things. We... Yeah. Ooh, it's called a snow betta, huh? Is that what that's called? A snow? Yeah. Like it's completely white. I'm trying to see if it's albino, but it's not. It's so not the a... trick with the white ones, people always ask like, will it stay white? And the answer is, we don't know. Too often at the year to 14, 18 months mark, it'll turn a little bit of pink and it's like, we can't keep it for a year and a half before we sell it. So it's like, well, you gotta take your best odds. Showa, tricolored platies. Hmm. Those are kind of nice. Yeah, the show is. You know, I've been, I've been looking at some of the live bears lately, top down. Yeah. For outdoors. And uh, these would look pretty good top down. So I saved the biggest bag for last, Ooh. and it looks like skunk cats. Yeah, what are they? I'm not sure which the scientific name on the corridor is there, but they are the, you know, they're either Malini or they're, um, um, I can't remember what the other one is. It's not Archelotus or something. Oh, yeah, it is, it yeah. Is, right? Archelotus. Yeah, so it's yeah. probably one of those two. Yeah. But the water's Corridors. milky and. The water always gets milky, but I think that might be that toxin. I'm still waiting to hear a talk by Eric Thompson. He's giving one at the catfish convention this year, but I haven't committed to going yet. And there is carbon in here. Yeah, to help yeah. absorb that toxin, so. Okay, box numero tuno. That's right. We switched cameras. The other one was having trouble focusing, so we'll see if this one does a better job here. And yeah. uh, the first camera, by the way, was the Galaxy Samsung Ultra, which for some videos was doing really well, but focusing on these fish like this, it was kind of struggling. You wanted to focus on your shirt or your face, and it's got face detection stuff in it, but I think it was fighting to not focus on the fish. So we'll see how the, my traditional iPhone does there with this. Go. And yeah, again, hot heat packs. Good, hot, hot heat. Shout out to a random band. Now let's see if we can get this band off of it. No, oh. that's two fails. <laughs> okay, we're starting off with two more bettas right on top here. Good Lord. I mean, and there's more down below. Again, a lot yeah. of these red um, uh, the veil, tail veil tails. Here. Very popular betta, I will yeah. say. You know, it's one of probably one of the most popular ones. If you hear dogs right now, it's because we have doggy daycares and uh, groomers around us, and someone just came to drop their dog off, so they're all and barking. So everybody's barking because yeah. they got a new friend. Okay, these guys look little. Ooh, Kubota. Oh yeah, like the us. green ones, the, the green, green ones. neons. Yep. Yeah. Very Those cool guys fish. can be real susceptible to velvet when we get them in, so we always, you know, take extra caution because I think they're mostly wild caught. They, you know, Those part of that is I got to realize now, now that I've been away from being in the store all the time for two years, that's enough time that these could all be commercially raised now, and I'm just not in the know because I'm not talking to a wholesaler every day like I used to. So we have some more quarries here. These look like uh, Paleotis. Yep. Um, there's a dozen in here. So I've got a question for you. You've been around for a good 10 minutes or so in the hobby. Yeah, a few. I call those salt and pepper quarries. Yes. Is that what you would call them also? I call them Paleotis. Okay, because- But also salt and pepper is the common name. Right, so, but a lot of people, a lot of their local fish stores call Habrosis salt and pepper quarries. That's wrong because Habrosis are a pygmy type quarry. I know, I, but so I've many people bring it up thing. and I don't, I've never seen that here in the Northwest, yeah. so. And, and this is also where one of the two types of albino quarries come from. Right. One is from this and one is, I believe, from the bronze. Mm-hmm, yep. Um, and, and I can never say Anenius. And yeah, yeah. I can't either. Look at this one. That's another snow. Yeah, but but this this could potentially be a female. Could, but I, I bet you it's male. It, it yeah. sometimes they come in young, especially some of these higher end ones. And another little crown tail. Yeah. 
So they're gonna be filling up the better racks here for any of you guys that are local. Yep, this video will come out fairly soon. So, you know, and that's the thing is, we get bettas in all the time. And we store like 200 plus of them. And so even when they're brand new, people come in and they get lost and they just start looking at bettas. Right. And we, some will stay around for a while, some leave yeah. fairly quick, but. Uh, Bring your kids, you'll go home with five. Mm-hmm. Hebrosis, Corridor's Hebrosis. So not uh, salt and pepper as we would call not them. Not salt and peppers. I call these, I mean, the pygmy cori is typically the Corridor's pygmaeus. Right. But we also have Habrosis and we have... There's a Nanus, I think. There, there's there one, is there's another like one. two or three other ones that I never see in the hobby. Oh, and Hestatus is my favorite. Yeah. yeah, that's my favorite too. Yeah. yeah, they're also the most expensive, of course. Of course. That's yeah. why. These are the ones I've actually spawned these before. Okay. These are probably the easiest to spawn. I would just give them all my leftover baby brine shrimp. Yeah. Eggs. I mean, even, even when it's not completely strained mm -hmm. uh, because they... Well, the way to breed all the, the pygmies is you colony breed them with no other Big predators, time. no snails, right. nothing like that, and just feed tons of small foods all the time, <laughs> yep. and we'll make some more. You're not gonna, you're not gonna get rich, you're not gonna make a thousand of them, that's no. why these things are still expensive, but they will make more. They will make more, and uh, lots of java moss and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So German mm -hmm. blue rams. So here's what happens. When Dean doesn't make enough rams, we have to buy from wholesalers. So and everyone has to say, Dean, make more rams. Yeah, now, and the, the thing is, currently I'm not spawning these. I know, you're I'm breaking I'm working them. on the black ones. Mm -hmm. And um, the black ones are proving to be a, more of a challenge than the blue ones, so. Uh, what, they, what people don't know is the ones that Dean brings in sometimes, they will be from black lineage, but aren't showing it, so. You know, we don't want to create a panic, but just know that there is some way to get some genes at random. What is that? These are green farawala. I don't know that I've ever seen little, that. Little stick. Let's see if I get them to come down here. Can you get that? Green on? ones, yeah. We want to have B-roll for Jimmy and let's These are actually later. very cool. They're, they're little. Huh. But they're, I had never but seen that really one. They're really cool. They're more of a, they're, they're more of a stick catfish than actual you know, i feel like i appreciate it more after catching four billion brown ones in the amazon like hey these <laughs> yeah. ones look kind of cool okay yeah. why couldn't we find some that look kind of cool box taco trace okay <laughs> i like that if i don't get one of these to pop off of here i'm really not going to be happy <laughs> <laughs> i've hit myself in the eye before. I, <laughs> I wasn't filming at that point, but I have hit myself in the eye. I did that once off the back wall with a racquetball. Nice. I, I didn't think I was ever gonna see again. It's a bag of... Glow bettas. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, I know it's there. Siamese algae eaters. Yep, yep. These well, are reticulated The reticulated ones. Now, what do they mean by that? Because I'm not sure. So I... when they get bigger, sometimes they call them like a fishnet Siamese algae eater. So they've got like all their scales are kind of outlined in black. Right. So it kind of looks like a net pattern on got them. It. And they eat algae really good. It's yeah. just everyone's afraid that, oh, this must, not, this must be a flying fox and not the other. It's like, well, no, there's actually a bunch of different Siamese there algae eaters. And so honestly, I wouldn't carry them because it's a pain in the butt but Robert absolutely loves them. And okay. so he sell like they buy them because he, he has an affinity for them. He just loves the way they look and the way they clean. He swears they clean better than a normal one. I don't know that I've seen any difference, but it's at least as good. I can say that. Well, okay, let's go, let's go to the common plecos. You got bristle nose and you got albino bristle nose. Mm -hmm. I feel like the albino ones clean far better than the normal ones. Yeah, well. And the albino ones are also out in the tank more. They're not hiding as much. Just my opinion. And for those, we know that it's not a common pleco. We're talking common types of plecosmids. It's, it's yes. not a common pleco. That is actually true. L052. Yeah. Those actually look good. Because they, sometimes they'll come in looking real muddy brown. Oh, these are the ones that I was saying, what are they on the list, right? Yeah. I let it, Dean preview the list so he wasn't completely They're in the kind dark. of cool looking. They're, so that's a Pleco, and I don't know the exact price, but that's a Pleco for many years we could sell between $20 and $25. So they're very cool for that price. Whereas, you know, a lot of the common, or not common, but fancy Plecos are more like, oh, this is $50, $60, $70. But right. I think they're kind of like a, a cheaper version of like a Leopard Frog Pleco. Probably. Uh, I bet you know what these are. Just look like some swords. Red albino sword tails. Hmm. The albino part is, I haven't really seen that too often. It's real common to see Molly's albino. Yep, and there is, there are both males and females. Hmm. 
Quattro. And Your German's see. getting really good. That's not German, I don't think. <laughs> I don't even know what it is. You can have all these boxes so you can ship fish out to people, Dean. Oh, those ones fell off. Should be another one somewhere, I would guess. So when that happens, you hope that nothing got cooked. cooked. Yeah. Because yeah. direct contact, you know, can so be So what would you problematic. consider these? These would be like 24 hour or 40? Usually they only use the 24 hours because they're shipping really quickly to us, but I'm sure with other people around the country, they would use some longer ones. But in my personal opinion, almost no wholesaler uses long enough heat packs. We have the ability right. to have four day heat packs now, right. and they all plan based on, well, they normally land at, 20, or at 48 hours, but if there's any delay, we can save shipments and they're, you know, the difference might be 50 cents per heat pack. And with all of these, that's an extra $3 probably, but right. people don't realize like even the box, depending on the wholesaler, they might have charged us $6 for that box. Uh, the styro liner and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah, and so some, sometimes our plant vendors charge us upwards of 10 or $12 per box. Wow. It's all, you know, costs go up and they have to get clever and how are we gonna pass this cost along? And, right. you know, the reality is like a plant just has to go up or a fish just has to go up, but there's people that have been around forever. They go, I'll never pay more than this for a neon tetra no matter what. And yeah, so, well, you know, neon tetras used to be 10 for a dollar. That's crazy to me. When I used to buy them. Yeah. 10 for a dollar. And to me, that was super expensive. Wow. So, Quattro, here we go. No. Where did it go? Went back in. Yeah, that's not fun at all. <laughs> There's an art to shooting Jimmy with those. <coughs> there is an art, yeah. I mean, I've opened up thousands and thousands of boxes. You, you learn how to aim them. Oh, let's see what we have here. Ooh. The Shadonai Puffer. Yep. I've seen spawning activity twice. It's actually really cool. I've watched it for about an hour one night where the female latch or the male latches onto the female's belly. Yeah, they bite them. And literally go around for a ride. They will stop every so often. He'll shake. Um, the thing that I didn't realize, everybody was telling me the eggs are really small. They're like beta size eggs. They're really small. Mm-hmm. And so um, I'm gonna do some experiments of my own, uh, of my way of trying to get them to breed and capture yeah. eggs. Most people that have success um, pull the eggs right away because they're notorious egg, egg and fry eaters. Okay. So. And once you figure it all out, you're gonna share it with people eventually, right? Yeah, and then bring all the babies to the store. I like it. Corydoras sturbae, nine of them. Yeah, they're a little small a too. A lot of people's favorite corys. They are dang near my, f I mean, I like a lot of pygmy corys, but they are up there for me. Yeah. Because if you see an adult fully grown in, like a big plump female like with, that, with they're the, really nice. With the orange fin. Yeah. yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. These are tiny. I have no idea. My guess is Brigitte rasbora, or exclamation point rasbora. Uh, if that's what... Oh, because that's the, the <laughs> scientific name. Yeah. I, that, that should be it's exclamation point. It's some form point. of rasbora. Yeah. It's exclamation point rasbora, I'm pretty yeah. sure. Because otherwise it would say Brigitte. Yeah. So that was box numero cuatro. So Dean was just asking me why I couldn't get any more Java fern on log. You know, the ones that, uh, that they're about yeah. that tall. We, we couldn't get them from one port of entry. So currently California is allowing them to come through, but the Seattle port will not. Oh, really? So we're wow. importing our own plants. Like Randy right now, while we're doing this, is importing an insane amount of plants. They just clear customs, he's picking them up. But in Washington, they won't allow any wood. And they said that it's pretty much been mandated within a short amount of time, no wet wood like that's gonna come into the country at all. Wow. So what we'll be doing long-term is we'll be getting still that same Java firm, but it'll be on lava rock. Okay. Uh, and that's just because it's the wood part. They can't guarantee that there's not wood weevils and other stuff yeah. in it. Yep, I can understand. And uh, it just makes us change it. So you guys eventually will see that change happen on the website of why'd they go to, you know, on rock. It's like, well, because it couldn't come in the country anymore. Yeah. So. But, you know, on rock would work just as well for what I would use. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's comparable. There's yeah. plus and minuses. I mean, there are people that don't like wood in their tanks. Mm -hmm. There's people that would rather have wood than rocks. Yeah. I so. mean, it just depends on the fish you're keeping. If you have plecos, like I want the wood a little bit, but right. rock's good too. And right. we, we go with what we can get. That's the reality. 
So Cinco, this is Cinco. All right. You didn't know I knew that much Spanish. Did no, you? I didn't. Neither did I. The Italian's getting good. This one's gonna go no matter what. <laughs> you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to practice at home. And I'm we'll going do this to. I'm gonna go someday. home. I'm yeah. gonna get a big bag with uh -huh. rubber bands on it. And this box smells like snails. So what happens sometimes is there'll be water in the bottom of these boxes because they'll get shipped fish in them too. Oh, it does. Smell like snails. A lot of old mystery snails. Woo! Escargo. A dead uh, a dead mystery snail is the worst smell. If you ever yeah, get it on your it's hands, horrible. it's unbearable. Yeah. Cherry barbs. One of my favorites. Yeah, nice looking I could do fish. that with ladybird. I love that fish. That would be a good one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good, good um, color. When, whenever I think about that, I mean, the same thing with the lungfish. I think about, will they out-compete for the food? Mm-hmm. And uh, because, because your key fish in the tank would be ladybird. Yep. Now, she's not going to be eating frozen brine shrimp cubes. Right. So they're not going to out-compete her. And ladybird's my other Mabu puffer if you that's, don't that's if you guys right. don't know. Could just be like, what Most are they talking them, about? If you guys don't know, you should have subscribed <laughs> long ago. That's right. And then there's this notify bell thing. Yeah. You you ring it. <laughs> and then you subscribe and then And then you become a member. And then you become a member. And and then you get all the This is more cherry barbs. Yep. Same. So there's fifty total, I think. Makes sense. Sunset honey mm -hmm. rummies. I do want to do a tank, like I would love to put like 500 of those in the 800 gallon because no one, no one's ever seen that before, including yeah. myself. Yeah. It might get boring after two months, but. That's one of the things that I really kind of wanted to do when we were in Peru is go to the location where the blue grommies have been introduced yeah. and they've populated and you catch blue grommies wild which is an Asian fish yep. in Peru. So Cinco is done. We that was a quick one, not that much one, in there. Not very many bags, that must have been snails. Yeah. They're snails. <laughs> it's know, not a fish so. unboxing. Yep. Now, has anybody gone this far? No. Box seis. <laughs> Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis. Not bad. I'm thinking, but you used to do this one-handed. Yeah. So maybe I'm doing it wrong. <laughs> What people don't know is we actually just retie them and take a thousand takes to make that happen. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> now, do you look for poop in the bag in the autos? Usually I do. I can see one floating there. Yeah, but he's alive though. All right. Peacock Gungeons. What is Robert thinking? I those don't things know. are Those things are terrors. Well, they they can be because people go, it's a nano fish. It's but eating my shrimp. It's not a nano fish. This thing's like two inches long. Yeah. They look ridiculously cool. But they are cool fish. And they're fun they're to spawn. Cool fish. Yeah. yeah. So what do you think Corey's favorite fish is? My guess, I'm just guessing, I haven't seen male guppies yet, but that's my guess. Uh, did I say favorite fish? Yeah. Maybe I was exaggerating the favorite part. I don't know. It, oh, it, it's got my, the coolie loaches. <laughs> <laughs> Worms. Yeah. It always feels weird when you actually just like, you hold them and you're like, oh, gross. Now, you guys know, or maybe, did we ever tell them the story about what, when I was almost kind of leaving the hobby, what got me back into it was a coolie loach. I think we've told that story somewhere. Yeah. On um, what was, video? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know, but it was like a 15 gallon hex tank. Um, the power had gone out. Uh, all the fish died. I was out of town for a week and a half. So I came back, all the fish were dead. So I just unplugged everything, the filter, the light, the heater, and nothing happened to that tank for 14 months. And then it started leaking, just a tiny little leak. I'm gonna redo that tank one day and we'll do a I've seen video. It. We'll cool. do a video you, you built that tank. I built it, it's a, it's a 15 gallon hex tank. And there was one coolie loach that was still alive in the tank. And my daughter was, you know, knee high to a grasshopper at that time. And I'm ready to go flush him. She says, Dad, no. We have to get a new tank for him. <laughs> and there you go. You never know what goes That's what sucked you back in. And yeah. now you're here that's unboxing right. Aquarium Co-op. Yeah. Thank you, Coolie Loach. So that's it.